What if I told you that around 50% of games in Valorant you're not losing because of your aim, mechanical skill or boosted teammates, but because of one very simple mistake that you can easily fix. And I promise you, if you watch this video from beginning to the end, you'll finally understand why you are hard stuck. Let me explain. What's up tricksters, my name is Charlatan, I'm the all time Radiant player from Close Beta and the number one most requested Valorant coach. Let's start first by saying that Valorant is the game Game where aim and shooting mechanics are extremely inconsistent compared to other FPS games. The main problems are that spray patterns are random, the first bullet accuracy is terrible, but also we have a problem where servers are kinda poo poo kaka and they don't always register your shots. That is why if you want to rank up faster, you never want to exclusively rely on your mechanical skill, and essentially the amount of kills that you take doesn't really matter that much. What truly matters is understanding how to close out the rounds, having impactful kills, and reducing the amount of times when you die in some stupid way. Instead of relying on your aim, mechanical skill and random teammates, you should primarily try to polish out the skill sets that are consistent and that can guarantee you winning more matches. And yes, aim and shooting mechanics are important to master. At the end of the day you need to take kills, but you want to fight enemies on your own terms and create create gunfights that are working in your favor. Every coaching session I start with two very simple definitions that every player needs to remember. Valorant is a game of numbers that is played on smart gambling, where we are trying to remove everything that is inconsistent and rely only on consistent skill sets. A consistent player in Valorant is the player that is able to keep positive KDA and win rate while performing every day on the same levels regardless of how good or bad he feels that day. Essentially, if you want to become a consistent player and consistently reach higher ranks, you need to mainly rely on consistent gameplay. And the consistent gameplay is the gameplay that relies on good game knowledge, game decisions, team play, adaptiveness, communication, mentality, attitude, proper training and preparation before our matches. And the inconsistent gameplay in Valorant is the gameplay that primarily relies on on random teammates and mechanical skill, because no matter how much deathmatch or aim training you're doing, one day you'll wake up as Scream and hit every one tap even if you are in gold, while the next day you'll play like a BOOSTED GORILLA. And this is completely normal for every player, especially if you're not radiant or a professional. But when you have a consistent gameplay you can easily compensate for other inconsistencies and perform on the same level every single single time. It's very hard to achieve the mechanical consistency where you are a match MVP every game. It's not impossible, but it takes thousands of hours spent into gameplay, deathmatch and aim training to achieve those levels of consistency. And even when you get on that level, in Valorant there's just too many mechanical inconsistencies which are present in the code of the game, where those training hours are simply not worth it. This doesn't mean that you should never do any aim training, but what you need to understand is how to properly invest your time when it comes to your improvement as a player. If you're spending 2 hours per day playing deathmatch or aim training, you should spend at least 50% more time working on these skill sets inside and outside of the game. Personally, I would say that my mechanical skill as a Radiant player is nothing special and my skill ceiling is not allowing me to become some godlike aimer. Also, there's rarely any time when I'm the match MVP, but I'm able to consistently reach Radiant every act without any struggle, because I'm relying on my brain over the aim and on consistent gameplay. Every single one of you that is watching this video can become charlatan and reach my levels of consistency, because hard work, smart training, dedication, using your brain at 120%, having consistent skill sets, settings, hardware, and gameplay is everything that you need to become a radiant or even a professional player. So, the number one mistake that is preventing you from ranking up and progressing as a player in Valorant is 
is over focusing on things that you cannot always control, while putting little to no effort in making your gameplay consistent. Okay, charlatan, will you actually show me how to become more consistent? First, stop yelling at me, and second, let me explain you this topic through a few examples. If we take your game knowledge, we can kinda divide it in five main categories. Understanding agents, understanding maps, implementing solid strategies every single round that you can easily replicate and practice every single game that you play, learning as many tips and tricks as possible, and having a proper economy management. So let's say you're playing first round of defender side on bind with omen. An average diamond player from my coaching sessions will let his teammates position in any way that they want, without even trying to correct them. Then he will adapt to them by playing some random position that he never played before, probably by a ghost with abilities, and pray to god that they will win this round somehow. But what I do instead is I always position two of my teammates to defend a site, and I tell two of my teammates to stop or delay enemies push to guard an area of B site. I position myself in the window playing a classic pistol shorty strategy with two smokes, light shield and one shrouded step. At the start of the round, I'm instantly doing this smoke to support my teammates on A site and delay or stop the enemy's potential advance. When I hear footsteps in B short or enemies deployed some kind of a reveal ability, such as Ray's Boombot, I'm doing a smoke that looks like this. This smoke creates a cubby position that allows you to dodge enemies' random spam, but also it allows you to dodge enemies' recon abilities. Then, after making numbers advantage, I'm quickly switching to my classic pistol, using shrouded steps to reposition and supporting two of my teammates on the bomb site. If the enemies pushed A site, I would just pick a classic pistol from the ground and play a retake with my allies. Now let's explain this in terms of game knowledge. Why do we have two players on A and three players on B in the first round? Well, there's actually a lot of statistical data and game knowledge that goes into this specific round. There is a chance that enemies will push A site, but here is where we need to do the smart gambling. Statistically speaking, B site of Bind is one of the hardest bomb sites to be retaked in Valorant, because of overall map and bomb site design. In solo queue, it has only around 40% retake success, and I would never allow myself to play a retake of B in the first round on Defender's side. No matter if my teammates are listening to my plan or not, I will still play a classic pistol shorty strategy in the window with Omen, because that is the absolutely best strategy to do in the first round on Bind. And on bind, I usually prioritize defending B over the A site when I have absolutely no idea where enemies will go next. And why is it stupid to play Ghost in the first round on Bind? It's not, but Ghost is simply the weapon that heavily relies on your raw aim, which can be extremely inconsistent from day to day. While Shorty and Classic are completely relying on your positioning and movement, which can always be 100% consistent. Learning how to play and utilize these weapons instead of this will guarantee you easier kills, especially on close range maps such as Bind. And buying light shield smokes and shrouded steps is always more important than buying a stupid flash in the first round, in order to be more adaptive and they will always be useful for some kind of a play, while flash might be completely wasted. As I said, there's a lot of data and planning that goes into this one simple round on one map, and I literally have a plan for every single round on every single map in order to play them at the highest levels of consistency. And I'm never allowing my teammates or random factors to impact the outcome of my rounds. I'm always taking full responsibility in order to learn, adapt and destroy enemies in my future games. Now, how do I collect data and make my strategies? In the past two and a half years, I've done at least 500 self-VOD reviews, but also around 3000 coaching sessions. And every single time, while observing some Valorant gameplay, I'm 
I'm taking multiple different notes, such as which bomb site is harder for retake, where players usually love to push in the first round in specific elo on specific map, how much success we have when we push some bomb site with or without some specific agents. And there's an enormous amount of this data that I've collected throughout my time with Valorant. I literally have an Excel and Word document with over 5,000 pages of raw gameplay data and how to properly play Valorant. And based on that data, but also my overall experience, I make solid and consistent strategies that are supporting the gambling aspect of this game. Now, strategies won't always work, and over time, through trial and error, you can easily polish them out. Okay, so this was an example of gameplay consistency, but what about mentality, attitude and communication? Essentially, these skill sets are kinda connected to each other and maybe the easiest to fix. You just need to force yourself into the right mindset. First of all, surrender option does not exist for you in Valorant. You cannot win every round, but every game is winnable, and you should never have the quitter's mentality. But also, you learn more, lose less rank rating and MMR if you play your games all the way to the last round. One of the major mental problems for players in Valorant is lack of confidence and being on a losing streak. Confident player will always win more gunfights and rounds because he will make more risky plays that might pay off in terms of winning more games, but also he will expand his playstyle and knowledge for the future games. I highly recommend you to force yourself into the mindset where you are not afraid to make mistakes because they are the part of your learning process. It's always better to lose games because of your mistakes instead of consistently losing games because of your teammates, because then you're not learning anything new and you're getting into the mindset where you're consistently blaming others for things that you can actually control yourself. Now, this topic is different for every player, but there are four main variables that can boost your confidence in Valorant. Knowledge, competence, outside real-life factors, and sex. Okay, maybe not sex. I mean, definitely can help, but you know. As you force yourself to make mistakes and learn from them, you're getting more confident because next time, when you get into that same scenario, you'll understand what you need to do. As you're reaching higher ranks and progressing as a player, you're also boosting your confidence. And there are numerous outside factors that can affect you. For an example, when I'm not going to the gym, not taking care of my body and mind, my confidence drops down significantly in both real life and video games. But let's bring this topic a bit closer to Valorant. Let's say you have a huge game knowledge. Outside factors are not impacting your confidence in a negative way, but you are not progressing in terms of the achievements and ranks in Valorant. You are hard stuck for months, and sometimes you have huge losing streaks that make you wanna delete this game. Here is one of my examples when I was hard stuck. In close beta, I reached Radiant but in Act 1 of Episode 1, I was Hearthstuck Immortal 3 for over 50 days. Even though I knew that I have huge game knowledge and skill, my confidence dropped down significantly, because I thought that I'm not competent enough to even be immortal, not to mention Radiant. Then I developed a plan, where I disconnected myself from my rank and completely changed my mindset. Your rank is not the real representation of your skill, and in order to reach Radiant, you first need to prove yourself that you can easily reach Immortal multiple times without any struggle. So I stopped caring about rank, and I only focused on consistency and my personal improvement. I created three additional accounts to completely disconnect myself from my rank, and to allow myself to make more mistakes and have more freedom in my gameplay. I brought four accounts into Immortal 3, and then I started grinding on all of them simultaneously. What was the result? of this approach. I didn't have a single account where I had a huge losing streak, so my mentality was never impacted by the result of my games. Instead, it was only impacted by my personal performance. I started experimenting a bit more, developing my playstyle in multiple different directions, expanding my game knowledge, and I also started focusing more on skill sets such as communication and attitude. Because how you interact with your teammates will inevitably
inevitably be tied to your mentality and overall chances of winning the game. Shit talking your teammates won't make them play better, and having pointless arguments with players that you probably won't ever meet again will put a strain on your own mental state. And over time, inevitably, one of my accounts reached Radiant, which significantly boosted my confidence, then another account also got in Radiant, and another one, and in Act 1 of Episode 1, I had four effing accounts sitting in Radiant. Grinding Valorant on multiple accounts simultaneously can help you tremendously in terms of disconnecting yourself from the ranks and mainly focusing on your improvement, personal performance and consistency. Now just a quick mention, hardware and settings are also important for your consistency and ranking up in Valorant. Finding good settings that work for you and with which you can stick forever will eventually lead to higher consistency. And the same goes for hardware, some of you guys are mainly hard stuck because of this problem. Good hardware won't instantly make you some godlike player, but it will significantly boost your skill ceiling as a player to which you can progress. For me personally, Valorant is unplayable without a 144Hz monitor, 150 plus frame rate, solid internet connection and a good mouse. So the main takeaway is that you need to start watching more of these guides and a bit less of the aiming stuff, you bonobos. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on for some future epic content. Leave a like and a comment down below to boost the YouTube algorithm, check out my twitch.tv forward slash charlatan channel for some live tips and solo queue shenanigans, join my discord server if you want to reach your dream rank and get coached by me, and if you enjoyed this one, I highly recommend you to check out my other guides and gameplay videos. I'm yours, one and only, warden of the tricksters community, thank you for watching and cut, baby!